Good morning everyone and welcome back to the Study Tube Project. My name is Manny and for those of you that don't know me, I am a fourth year studying computer science and philosophy at the University of Oxford and today I'm going to be bringing you a video on the basics of coding. I know that a lot of you are probably thinking that coding is this like crazy evil genius thing that just requires you to be the most intensely smart and academic person out there and requires so much understanding of Cody things, but that's just not true. Let's just take all our preconceived ideas about coding and put them on the side. Just pop them down. And today I'm going to spend a couple of minutes just telling you the basics of some of the key ideas that are involved in coding. And by the end of this video, hopefully together, we would have written our first program. Three, two, one, let's get into this. So I'm going to be doing this sort of split screen style thing because I'm trying to be such a professional YouTuber. Why would you want to start? Why would you want to learn how to code? Coding is an invaluable skill and as we move into the future of the world, whatever the future it holds, um, coding is going to be a ne almost a necessary skill and I remember my computer science teacher in school telling me that programming or coding in whatever language you want to learn is the English of the future and it's one of those kind of skills that you could learn to do it at home not have a degree in it and get a job as a software engineer or a back-end stack engineer or whatever um, without having a formal qualification because it is just one of those skills that they don't require you to have a formal qualification if you're good if you can show them that you are skillful within this domain then you'll get a job and some of these jobs are ridiculously high paying so if by the end of this video if you do enjoy what we're doing I'm gonna put some links in the description box below so you can check out some more resources for yourself. So what we're going to cover today is some initial ideas of what some statements are, how statements come together to put a program together, and then we're going to build our first basic program. So first we're going to look at what a statement is. Now a statement can be any sort of single line of code, doesn't necessarily even have to be on a single line, but that's just one way to sort of explain it to you. Now the first kind of statement that we're going to look at is um, a variable assignment. So what we're doing is let's say I type x equals 1. Now it's important to understand that in programming the equal is not thought of the same way as we look at equals in mathematics. So in maths equals can mean 1 equals 2, that doesn't make sense to us. If you write A equals 1, that means they're both exactly the same thing. However, in computer science we have to remember that equals is assigning something. When we have A equals 1, a is an empty box that we've just got and we're throwing one inside of it, we're assigning something to it. Equally we could say A x equals hello. That means we're putting the word hello inside this box x. Now the cool thing is that when we create a variable like x, this variable can have any type. So this could be an integer, a string, which means a series of letters put together, so words, sentences, etc. It could be just a single character. There are many different things and these are known as, as data types. So let's say I just want to have, I want to have variable x and we're going to make sure that it's an integer. So here I've declared that it's int x and I'm going to give it the value 2. Now I'll put this semicolon to show that this line is over. Now this kind of syntax varies across programming languages, but here I'm just assuming that we're using a sort of Java-like language. So we've got int x equals 2. Now hopefully we've all understood that we've created a variable x and the data type of that variable is int. So that means we've specified that this variable is going to be assigned a number at some point. May not be, but that's the type of data that we're going to put inside the box that we've labeled x. So that's one kind of statement. Now what we can do is we can control the flow of data using other kinds of statements. One of them is known as an if-then statement. So if I write if, and what this does is it allows me to perform an action based on a certain condition. So if I write if x equals 2, then and then I can put inside these brackets what I want to happen. Print yes. So that means when I run this program, it's going to check the value of x. And that's done with two equals, sorry. It's going to check the value of x. And then, if this is true, it's going to perform what's in the brackets. And if it isn't, it's going to do nothing. If we want, we can add an else clause, which means that if that isn't... if if whatever's in those brackets doesn't hold, you can perform a different action. We can say print no. 
So an if-then statement is just one kind of way that we can kind of control the flow of what is happening based on variables that we've created or different things that are happening in the program. Now you might be thinking, gross is great, but how does this help me make an application or do things like that? And these kind of small things can be built up to create more complex programs. Later on, we're going to be looking at how we can create a program that will check whether a number is divisible by another number. And it's really important to have these kind of if clauses to help us with that. Another type of way to control the flow of data is a while clause. Now some of you might have guessed it, a while statement works by rather than checking if whatever's in the bracket works, it's going to keep looping while whatever is in the bracket is still true. So if I say while x is greater than, while x is less than zero, keep performing what's in here, x equals x minus one. Now I, the first thing you're all probably thinking is that makes no sense whatsoever. X doesn't equal x minus 1, it can never equal x minus 1. And again, we have to remember here that equals is not the same kind of equals as it is in maths. Equals here is a variable assignment. So here what we're doing is we're saying that whatever x held, it's now going to hold 1 less than that. We're going to look inside that box, see what value x had, take 1 away from it and then assign that to x. And we're going to keep doing that until x is less than zero. We've learned how to make statements that have variables in them. We've learned how um, we can flow the control of data using if statements and while loops. Now we're gonna see if we can put those together to create the basic program, checking whether one number is divisible by another. What I'm gonna do is we're first going to do this without using any sort of specific programming language. And then we're gonna put this in a compiler, big word, scary, I know, but we're, we're gonna get through it. Um, and we're going to see whether, and we're going to write it in Java and then see whether our program works and if we have any issues. When we think about um, creating a, a program to do something, in this case we're going to give it two numbers, we're going to have to have an input, we're going to make use of a function. Now functions, just like in math, we're going to map some inputs to some outputs. Now in this case the problem that we're solving is we're giving two numbers and we're checking if they're divisible. So we're going to take two inputs, so let's say we're going to create a function and we're going to call it divisible. Divisible. Int x and int y. So we're specifying that we're going to give it two integers. Look at the body of this method and see what exactly are we putting inside this method. What, are we, what would do we want this function to do? Because if we just said return x. Now this is just a function that is taking two numbers and returning the first one. If we said return y, it's taking two numbers and returning the second one. So we can see how we can actually build up programs like this. So what we want to do is we want to check whether the first number can be divisible by the second. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to use a while loop. And the logic behind it is we're going to take the first number and we're going to keep subtracting the second number as many times as we can until that number. So if we have 25 and we have 5, we're going to keep subtracting 5 from 25 until that number is less than the number that we're dividing by, if that makes sense. If you haven't understood that, take a second to think about it. We're going to take our big number, we're going to take the number um, that we want to check whether it's divisible by this other number, and we're going to keep taking it away on, until it is, until it's smaller than this number. Then what we can do is we can check if that leftover number is zero, that means we've been able to divide it perfectly each time, we've been able to subtract that number perfectly each time. But if it's in between zero and that number, that means it's clearly not a divisor. Now the way that we can implement that, no that logic into this code is by checking, so while x is greater, and then within the body of this code, we can say x equals x minus y. Now do we re remember why that equals is totally okay and doesn't feel weird because it's assigning a new value. While x is greater than equal to y, we're going to say x equals x minus y. And that means when this loop terminates, x, that means this is no longer satisfied. And so that means x is less than y. So now how, how is it we can check whether this is divisible once that loop is over? We're going to say use our if statements that we learned about. If x equals zero, we're checking, so we use a double equals, then 
print yes else no Okay, so if you haven't understood that, rewind and see whether you understand the logic behind that. Again, don't focus on the syntax of what we're writing, just focus on whether you understand the logic of this program. So we're inserting two numbers, and we'll want to output yes or no depending on whether the first number is divisible by the second number. We're going to keep subtracting the second number from the first number until that number is no longer bigger than the first one, that's the underlying assumption that we've made. Um, and then once that number has become so small that it, we can no longer subtract that without it becoming negative, we'll check if that number is zero or not. Now what we're going to do is go onto an online Java compiler, put all of this in Java and see whether it works. So now what I'm doing is converting this sort of pseudocode that we've created, which means code and programs that aren't in a specific language but are basically showing us the logic. So we easily created that using just the logic and now I'm going to convert that into Java. So each language has its own syntax, so in some languages you put semicolons after every line and some you don't in some you write if then, in some you just write if in brackets. So there's a lot of confusion amongst different languages. I would recommend you just sort of pick one, Java, Python, they're generally simpler ones to begin with, um, and sort of take a go. So I'm, what I'm going to do is compile this in Java. So this is just an online Java compiler. So when you run a program, your main class is what sort of runs. Anything that happens in the main class is going to be called. So what I'm going to do is call a function in the main class and then create that function that we just made below so we can refer to it. So just think about it as this, the main class is a to-do list of what's going to happen the moment you execute a program. If you create a function that isn't in the main class sort of down here, but you haven't referred to it in the main class, it's not going to run because it wasn't on today's to-do list. So if I create a function, call it pub, so just ignore all of this stuff for now. So we're going to call the function divisible and we're going to say that it takes two arguments, so two inputs, arguments is the formal word for that, and we're going to say, we're going to start now looking at what, looking at our program. So while x is greater than or equal to y, x equals x minus y, so this is going to end when that the condition no longer holds, so now we're going to check if x is equal to zero, then system dot out dot print line, just a, again this is just Java syntax on how you print something, print, and then we can add an else, say, cool, so let's run so now, again, we've created this function, but we haven't called it in the main class, so it's not, nothing is going to happen. So if I go here and I say divisible, I'm calling the function divisible, let's say 25 and 5, and divisible to make sure it's not just giving us correct for everything. Select execute and see what happens. So now we can see we've got a bunch of errors. So clearly I have screwed up somewhere. Um, it's always easy to see which where these errors come from because it will show you. There's a little arrow pointing, okay, there's an error here. So if, oh, okay, this is me screwing up because Java doesn't use thens. So Java, you just say if and you check. Let's try that. Okay, so I'm forgetting some semicolons. So there should be a semicolon there. And I'm forgetting, see when no one is perfect at all, should be a semicolon in there. Let's try that. Okay, what's wrong? Okay, I spelled divisible incorrectly, so a bit of an idiot there. See, perfect. So yes, it is divisible, and no, it is not divisible. And there we go, we've just written a program on checking whether two numbers are divisible and you didn't even know how to program at the beginning of this and if you did, sorry, this must have been quite easy for you so I'm really sorry that I had to put you through this. But yeah, so that was such a simple way of putting a program together. I know that the, the sort of the syntax of Java may not be that straightforward but I will put some online courses underneath to kind of give you, um, to see if that can help. Um, yeah, I'm very proud of us. Together we have learnt, again, recapping, we've, we've learnt how to create variables, how to use if statements, how to use loops, put them together to create a function, test that function out, debug it with some errors. You are basically a full-fledged computer scientist. If you enjoyed this, there's probably a good chance that you will enjoy programming in general. So, do check it out. It's a valuable skill to pick up, and if you have some time this summer, 
try it out. You never know. You might be the next Mark Zuckerberg. You might program us out of this mess of coronavirus. Um, yeah, either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. I, I really tried to break it down as much as I could. Um, I'm hope, I hope you guys are having a great day wherever you are and that you found this video somewhat useful. If you haven't checked out my own personal channel, it is This Is Manny and I've linked it down below. And yeah, thanks for watching guys and I will see you guys soon. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. <laughs>